programming for the PushBot for Tetrix robots. Uh, today we are going to be doing the program for the teleop, which means teleoperation or remote operation, um, which is a driver controlled uh, robot. So it does not run on its own. The robot does not run on its own. Um, the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and open up your PushBot project that you started with the autonomous code. And we need to connect to our NXT brick uh, through the pro main project screen. So I'm going to go ahead and click for choose NXT v3. And I need to go down to um, find NXT v3. And I'm going to make sure my NXT is on. And I'm going to click scan. Okay, so at this time we want to make sure that we connect through Bluetooth so that way we can control our robot through um, the controllers hooked up to the computer, which is sending signals to the robot through Bluetooth. Um, so my NXT on the screen itself has a name of BHS8672 and I want to make sure my connection type says Bluetooth. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to my NXT. And I know I'm connected when I have a battery level. And it tells me all the details of my NXT. So now I can go ahead and close um, my screen. And I'm going to set up for my remote control. So I need to click on the folder that says remote control. And we're going to create new. And I'm going to title this one setup. So this is the file that we're going to use to set up um, any remote control programs that we need for our robots. And the window that appears is our remote control editor. So we're going to go ahead and on configure robot drive, uh, we want to do tank, which as you can see uses both joysticks to drive the robot. Um, we want to make sure that controller one is for the robot drive. So only controller one is um, driving the DC motors, the drive system on our robot. So I'm going to go ahead under left motor and choose my left foot motor and right motor is going to be right foot motor and I'm going to leave it as a power of 75. So the next thing we need to do is configure the robot action which is any extensions or arms or additional parts attached to your chassis of your robot. And this needs to be on controller 2 because if you try and put um, things also on controller 1 for the action it will give you errors. So I selected controller 2 and now I need to choose the buttons that are going to raise and lower my arm of my robot and open and close um, the gripper of my robot. So to start with, I'm going to do the arm as to do the joystick. So for the joystick, I'm going to go ahead and click on the joystick part. I don't want to click on the button. I want to click on the arrow so that way it says right Y. And this is going to be moving the arm up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my motor, um, which is going to be my left arm motor. And I'm going to give that a power of 100. And since I can only put on one motor at a time, I need to go into the code later and connect the right arm motor to the left arm motor so they work in tandem, they work together. Servers are for my gripper. I'm going to go ahead and click on button 1. And servos moved um, to position. So under choose an action, I'm going to go to move, uh, move to position. And I'm going to choose my left hand servo. And I'm going to have that in position 0. So all the way in one direction, one position. And once again, I can only put on one servo. Um, I'm going to have to go into the code itself to put on the right servo to work with the left servo in tandem, so together. So I also need, if this is open, I need button 2 then to close. So I'm going to click on button 2 and I'm going to choose move to position again because servos are moved to position. Motors would be the other ones. So move while pressed or move for distance. 
Um, so move to position, and I'm going to choose my left hand servo again. And this time I'm going to have a position of 255. So I'm going to make sure I click save, because this is saving my setup file. And now that I have this set up, I can have this program, this control editor, generate the code for me. So I'm going to click the button at the top that says generate code. And it's going to go through and use all the information that I gave it to generate the code. And I'm going to name this one pushbot teleop. Because once again, teleop means teleoperation, so driver control. And I'm going to click create, and it's going to generate my code. So after you give it a little bit of time, it will generate your code for you. So here's my code. And we can see that it put in controller one with the left and right foot motors um, that are going to be driven with tank style drive. And it gave it a control. And if I double click that, I can see that my drive power is 75. So that means um, it has a range of 75. So from 0 to 75 power is what my DC motors can do. Um, so this I can change on the front panel because that uh, allows me to adjust ranges of numbers to controls and indicators. Um, so I don't need to change anything in controller 1, but if we go down to controller 2, um, this is where it created a case structure that has the different buttons as different cases. So that allows my controller to choose, depending on what button is pressed, uh, which program to do. Um, so starting at button 1, this is where we put in one servo, the left-hand servo, and it has a power of 0. I need to put in the right-hand servo that's going to work together with that left-hand servo to open and close my uh, my gripper of my robot. So I'm going to go ahead and right click to pull up my functions palette. And I need to go to input output, advanced motors, and move servos. So I'm going to put that down. I'm going to right click and create a constant and have this one be my uh, right hand servo. So right hand servo. And I'm going to create a constant for the position of 255. Now, the reason that these are two different values, so one extreme to the other, is because your servos on your push bot are situated, are oriented opposite from each other. So if you had both the servos go to zero, it would be like a windshield wiper going in the same direction. We don't want that. We want them to go together to close and go apart to open. So we want one to be at zero and one to be at 255 so that way they're going in opposite directions from each other. So that's what I have on button one. I'm going to go ahead and move to button two so it's going to be the same thing where I need to put in a move servos block. I need to create a constant and put in my right hand servo And my left hand is at 200, position 255, so I'm going to have this one be at position 0 then. So if you notice, button 1 has the left servo at 0, right servo at 255. Button 2 has the left at 255 now and the right at 0 to be able to open and close. So then the last thing we need to do on this program is to take our... Uh, NXT motor and add on the right arm motor so that they work together. And I also need them to share the same power. So I'm going to click power and speed 2. So for the blue motor and that's for my right arm motor and connect those together. So that way it's using this joystick um, to be able to give uh, my left and arm motors, NXT motors, the same power together. And if you double click this right Y, this joystick, it also tells you all the ranges and you can see for the power level right now that it is at 50. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change that to 100 um, so that way I'm using the most power that I can. 
So that's going to give me a range of power from um, 100 to uh, negative 100. So then now up at the top I should have a solid arrow for my run. Um, that shows I have no errors. If you have errors, so if this is a broken arrow, then you need to click on that and uh, double click any errors you see to see if you can fix them. Um, if you have trouble fixing them, then make sure you let your teacher know so that they can help you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and download to my NXT and I'm already connected through Bluetooth to my NXT brick, so I can just click deploy and have it send to my NXT. So then the way to run your robot through Teleop um, is to go ahead and I don't need to be in this programming window. So if I start from the Project Center screen, this is going to be the process every single time to run your robot through Teleot through Remote Control. So under Remote Control, the Remote Control folder, if you don't have your file, um, just click New and call it Setup again. But really, we're just using this file to get into the Remote Control Editor. So I'm going to go ahead and double click Setup to open my Remote Control Editor. And we already have the program created. So I don't need to do anything with robot action and drive because that is where I'm just setting up for the program. So I want to go straight to run program. And in this case right now it says keyboard. So I need to connect my controller to my computer. And then I can click on refresh. And now it should say um, your controller. And I can see that my controller is working by pressing the buttons on the controller itself also. Um, I also need to go ahead and uh, connect controller 2, which once I connect that to my computer and push refresh, now I should be able to see controller 2 and pressing the buttons on the controller appears on my remote control editor also to show that it's working. So to run my program, I want to go to Telia. So once again, that means driver controlled. And I'm going to select my program. Um, I can either select my program under Run, since it's already on the NXT, or I can do Download and Run. Um, I always like to do Download and Run just in case the program didn't transfer correctly or if I did not upload it yet to the NXT brick. So I'm going to choose my program that we created, which is the Pushbot Teleop. And I'm going to click Enable and then I need to click Start Test. And so it's going to go ahead and open my program, send it to my robot. My robot should beep and say Enabled. And at that point now, um, I can go ahead and drive around my robot and test everything out. Once I'm finished, I need to click, click Stop Test. Um, if this is grayed out, that means you lost connection to your NXT and you need to go back to the main project screen and choose your NXT again.